Hello and welcome to Make a Memory Bear. Today we're making Beatrice the Memory Bunny. The link to purchase the pattern is in the description box below. It'll take you to my Etsy shop where you purchased the pattern and it's immediately sent to you in an email where you printed it home. For supplies, I am recommending a sewing machine. However, you can choose to make this pattern by hand as well. You'll need scissors, pins, thread, and optionally you'll need a seam ripper, embroidery thread, and a needle. 16 ounces of stuffing and I highly recommend that you use safety eyes and noses. I use 15 millimeter eyes and 20 millimeter nose. You will also need approximately one yard of fabric. If you're making a memory bear, use it from a loved one's clothing. Print out the pattern and then cut all of the pieces out on the solid line. For your fabric, I highly recommend if you're a beginner that you choose a material that is the same on the outside and the inside so there's no wrong or right side. Other materials have very clear right sides and wrong sides to the fabric where you can see the print on one side and the other side is white or has nothing on it. If your fabric has a right side and a wrong side, fold it so that the right sides are together before we move on to the next step. Let's talk about these pattern pieces. You'll notice they each say cut to one reverse or cut for two reverse. Essentially what that means is if you have a fabric with a clear right side and wrong side, one of your patterns is gonna need to be cut out the normal ray and then you're gonna need to reverse it so that the wording is face down and you'll need to cut one out the reverse direction. Now, if you have material that is the same on the inside and the out, this does not matter. Just cut all your pieces out. Uh, but if you do have this material like I'm using today, it's easiest to place your material with the right sides together, pin your pattern piece on top, and then you just cut it out one time and that will give you one going the right way and one going the reverse way. We are ready to begin pinning the pattern pieces onto the fabric. Make sure your right sides are together. And I'm choosing to use two different types of fabric. One is gonna be for the ears specifically in this pattern. And then I'm gonna do the rest of the bunny in uh, the blue patterned material that I have here, just to give it a little bit of contrast and interest. Once all your pattern pieces are pinned to the fabric, it should look a little something like this. And a couple of other words about the material specifically. I would highly recommend using some sort of abstract or floral or solid. Those are the easiest to use. Stripe designs or plaid designs are a little bit harder to match up those lines. So this is gonna be recommended for a beginner. I also believe that a stiff, sturdy fabric is gonna be the easiest to use. If you're using anything that's very thin, stretchy, old, delicate, silky, satiny, I would highly recommend using an iron-on stabilizer that you put on the back of material before you cut it out. That will help it uh, not fray and not stretch out of place while you're making the bunny. And now we're ready to cut the pattern pieces from the fabric.
for any pattern pieces that say to cut out four and two in reverse, I cut the first two out, then I removed the pattern piece and I put it uh, elsewhere onto my material and I cut out two more as opposed to trying to cut out four all at once. That can make a little bit bulky and the edges can get kind of weird and out of shape. Now I've got all my pattern pieces cut out of the appropriate material that I want to use and we are ready to get sewing. We are going to begin with the head. So I'm going to start by taking the pattern piece off of the head pieces. We're going to start with seam A which is going to make the front of the bunny's head and then seam B, the one with this triangle, um, that'll be the back of the head. So we'll start with seam A. We've got four pieces here, so we're going to separate it into our first two with the right sides together. And I'm going to place a couple of pins on this side. So I remember this is the side that I'm working on. This is going to make the face. And then while I'm handling the head, I'm going to go ahead and pin the seam B, which will make the back of the head. This is the side with that little triangle. So we'll pin that and set it aside for later. So now I've got the front of the head pinned and I've got the back of the head pinned. I'm just going to set the back of the head off to the side because we won't sew that until a later step. Let's start with seam A. Quick, easy, and straightforward. We're done with seam A in the front of the head. Next are the ears. We have four ear pieces, so we're going to remove this pattern piece and then we're going to separate the ears into two separate ears and we'll sew along the perimeter and then turn those right side out. Once I sew around the perimeter, I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm going to clip these tiny little cuts all along the rounded part of the ear, like the lower half of it. This is going to help it lay flatter once we turn it right side out. Make sure that you don't cut through the thread that you just sewed though. and then repeat the process with the other ear.
We're going to attach the ears to the front of the head next. We're gonna use these little triangles as markers so that we know where to line them up so they're even on each side of the head. I like to take my ear and fold it um, almost in half, about a third, just like this before I sew it into place. It gives it a little bit of lift, a little bit of interest so it doesn't, doesn't lay so flat on the head, but that's totally a designer choice. You can pin these uh, directly to the head just flat or you can fold them like I do. Look it over real quickly to make sure that the ears look centered and then you're ready to sew them into place. Moving on to the arm, we're going to remove the pattern piece and we're gonna separate the arms into two separate arms just like we did with the ears. We wanna make sure that our right sides are together. We're gonna to be sewing around the perimeter of this arm. However, we do not wanna sew between these two triangle notches. That's uh, where we're gonna leave a stuffing hole so that we can stuff the arms later on. pin and sew it into place and then repeat the process with the second arm. Just like with the ears, we're gonna take our scissors and cut those little slits around the curved part of the arm so that it lays flatter once it's stuffed. The front of the body is pretty straightforward. We're gonna remove our pattern piece and we're gonna be sewing along seam A, which will make the belly of the bunny or the front of the body.
Our next step is to pin the arms onto the front of the body up at the neck. And so this is going to be the um, the area of the body that's opposite of those cutouts. The, that's where the legs go. So up at the neck, you're going to take one of the arms and pin it into place. I like it a little bit closer to the edge as opposed to right up on that center seam. But I don't want it all the way to the edge, but just close to it. And I'll put one or two pins just to hold it in place. Also, it is important that the curvy part of the hand uh, kind of goes towards the belly, towards that center seam. So again, I don't want this right at the edge, but I want it close to, to that outer edge. And I want the hands to be pointing towards the belly. And now we're going to take the head and we're going to attach that to the body as well. So you're going to need more pins for this and what we're going to do is attach that right on top of those hands or arms so that they're sandwiched in between. We're going to take the bunny's head, we're going to match up the neck so that center seam that goes right down the center of the head and that goes down the center of the body are lined up. I like to take these little uh, seams and kind of lay those flat and then I'm going to pin it into place. So when it's done, it should look something like this, the head and then the arms are going to be sandwiched in between and then we'll have the body, body as our, our bottom layer. And then we'll just sew straight across. We're going to attach the safety eyes and nose to the face next. What I like to do is fold the head in half along that seam and line it all up so that it's all even so that we get our placement just right. So it's nice and flat. And then I'm going to grab the pattern and I'm going to place it on top and I'm actually going to use a seam ripper and go straight through the paper on both sides of the head so that I get the eye in the same spot on both sides.
I'm going to grab the paper pattern again to use as a template to have a rough idea of where the nose should go. But again, this is designer's choice, so you can place this nose wherever you like it best. I grab my seam ripper again, and I'm going to start a tiny, tiny little hole right next to the seam, but not on the seam. If you try to place the nose directly in the seam, it will unravel over time. So put a little tiny starter hole next to the seam and then pop it into place. This is also a good time to grab your embroidery thread and add any extras you would like, such as eyelashes or a mouth or whiskers. For this Beatrice bunny, I'm just going to add a couple of quick whiskers. Kind of hard to see, but now she has whiskers. Next, we're going to add the legs to the front of the bunny. So take one leg, lay it with the right sides together, and pin it in place so that that half circle shape should line up just right, and you can pin it and sew it into place. You want the feet of the bunny to be going towards that center seam when you sew it in place. Now we're ready to go back to the back of the head and we already pinned it along seam B so we'll just sew a quick stitch along that seam. For the back of the bunny, we're going to be sewing along seam A, which is both above these triangles and below the triangles. However, we do not sew between the triangles. Just like with those arms, we want to leave a hole there so we can stuff the bunny later. So I'm going to pin it and then I'm going to sew it.
and give it a quick check just to make sure that you have that hole for stuffing later. Next, you wanna open up that back piece and lay it flat because we're gonna work on these darts, these little triangles down at the bottom. You wanna fold the material towards that center seam where the stuffing hole is and we're gonna pin it in place. And then we're gonna fold the other dart coming the same direction towards the center seam and pin that in place. So it should look something like this when you're, when you're done pinning. And then we'll sew right on the dart on each side. You should have these two pleats on the bottom of the bear now. That's gonna help make a little bum for it so it sits up nicely when it's all done. We're ready to attach the back of the head to the back of the body. Now where we just sewed those darts is what makes the bum, so that's the bottom of the bear. The opposite end is the neck, and that's where we're gonna attach the head. And just like we did with the front of the head, uh, we're gonna use that center seam First, to line it up, um, it goes down the center of the head and the center of the body, so match that up, fold those little seams down flat, and then pin it into place. and then we'll sew straight across. Moving along to the back legs, we're gonna separate those into single pieces and we're going to attach them to the back of the body. And just like we did with the front, we want the right sides together. And we want the foot going towards the center of that body, towards the center seam where the stuffing hole is. and repeat on the other side. Now 
Now comes the hardest part of the entire pattern. We are going to be attaching the front of the body to the back of the body. So you really want to take your time with this because it is the trickiest part. What I like to do first is uh, take these ears and I kind of roll them up and tuck them inside the face because I want those out of the way. I don't want those to get caught up in the seam around the edge. And I, I also make sure that the arms are kind of tucked in and out of the way. And then I just take the back of the body and I'm gonna lay it right on top of the front with the right sides together. I like to start with a very obvious spot, that center seam right up at the top of the head because I want that to be lined up along the entire uh, bunny. So I lay those seams flat and I get to pinning. The next obvious spot is to go down to the center seam that it's at the bottom of the bunny. So find the seam that goes along the front, find the seam that goes along the back. That's the one with the stuffing hole. There's a lot of seams on the back, so don't get confused. Take that center one, line it up, put some pins right there. Next, I move on to the neck. That's a good spot that's easy to line up. So I'll put some pins on either side there. And then I just finish up the whole head, making sure the edges are lined up and just pinning as often as I need to to make sure everything is lying flat and looks smooth. I then carry on down the sides of the bunny on each side, putting pins until I get to the seam where the legs kind of meet. But honestly, I'm kind of all over the place. So now I'm down back at the bottom again and doing the legs there. I'm doing everything I can to make sure that the legs and the toe area are all nice and edges are touching. And just like I said, take your time with this, put as many pins in as you need to and make sure that it's all even and smooth before you get to sewing. It should look like this when you finally are done pinning it. I start back up at the top of the head at that center seam to get sewing and again for this part, just take it nice and slow and maneuver it, change it around, whip it this way and that way, whatever you need to do to get all the way around that perimeter. And uh, make sure that you're staying on track. Every once in a while my sewing machine gets away from me and I kind of go off, off the rails. So take your time and try not to have any spots where you, you fall off. And when you're done, you're ready to turn your bunny right side out. So you just pull her through that stuffing hole that's in the back. We're ready to stuff the bunny and I start by stuffing the head. I personally like to put a lot of stuffing in the head because I want it to maintain a nice solid round shape. But after the head, I move on to the legs. Again, for the feet and legs, I put a lot of stuffing because this is a rather stiff bear that sits up straight and I want it to maintain its shape. But then I do the belly and the arms and that's where you can make them nice and squishy if you want to. Totally personal preference how much stuffing you use. I use a ladder stitch to close the stuffing holes on the back of the bunny and on the back of the arms, but I'm not very good at it, so I linked somebody else's tutorial down below that is really good at teaching this step. And finally, it's time to accessorize. This is where you can really go crazy with the um, personal touches to make this your special bunny. You could put bows or flowers, on the head or on the ears if it's a little girl bunny. You could add a bow or ribbon if it's a little boy. You could add a collar. You could get some 
iron-on appliques if you wanted to add a heart or any other special little symbols that are um, personal to you. Just go crazy with the accessories. Really make it your own. And there you go, folks. We're done. Beatrice the bunny is all done. Thank you so much for watching.